Welcome back to the second week of online lectures for the BIM Dynamo course at UWA. This week we're going to go through setting up Rhino and Grasshopper to perform really well on our machines and also to look really good. So we're going to do a few visual tweaks and a few performance tweaks. We're going to run through the custom preview component in Grasshopper for um, showing geometry with different materials and different colors. We're going to revisit the Grace Farm script that we worked on in class and we're going to use uh, this new custom preview component to adjust the preview of some parts of the building. And then we're going to run through an image sampler script, which should be really useful in your work going forward. Um, you could definitely use it in the assignment as well, but it's quite a versatile uh, way of referencing um, imagery and bring it into a geometrical environment. One quick thing I just wanted to show you guys is this um, website here, rhino.github. .io. Um, now this contains a lookup of all the different components in Grasshopper and if you click on any of them you'll find uh, all their inputs and outputs. It's really useful if you just need a little bit more of a description about certain Grasshopper components than the tooltips give you or if you're trying to find something. So if I go into Evaluate Surface here, which is one we've used before, we can see these the inputs it's looking for, there's a surface and some points, um, and the whole load of outputs here as well. And if we're just trying to find something, we can just use the built-in um, search tool from our browser with, with in Chrome, it's just Control F. And say I'm looking at um, something to do with color, I can just type color, and um, I'll get all the components related to that. Okay, so I've just opened up Rhino and Grasshopper here on the right. Um, and the first thing I'm gonna do is just adjust the display of Rhino um, so that when we take screenshots, uh, the visuals will be of a little bit of a higher standard. Um, so like last week, the first thing we want to do is uh, turn off the grid and adjust the background color. So at the tops of all these um, windows here, we have this little down arrow. If we click on this, if we go down to an option called display options, uh, this dialog here should pop up. Now this is how you adjust the um, display modes uh, within Rhino. So Rhino has a number of ways of displaying geometry. I'm just going to draw a box here to demonstrate that. The default mode is this wireframe where none of the faces have any shadows on them. Uh, but there are a number of modes that um, it comes sh shipped with. There's shaded and rendered, just for uh, displaying different things. But all of these anyway are completely um, adjustable. So we have access to all the different options through the display options dialog here. Now the things that I like to do is uh, just to turn off the grid. So under the grid options here, instead of use document settings, we can go to use mode specific settings and turn all these things off. And then I like to just have a nice white uh, background. So if we are compositing images um, in a page later, they'll just the white will blend into the background of the page. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that. Now on the Grasshopper side of things, uh, the good thing about Grasshopper is um, it doesn't need uh, expensive hardware to run. It can run actually on very low end machines, and I myself have personally done most of my work on a six hundred dollar laptop that I bought a couple of years ago. Um, Grasshopper only ever uses one core of the CPU. So even if you have a really, really powerful CPU, um, apart from the most the latest update of Grasshopper in Rhino 6, which has started to implement multi-threading, basic Grasshopper only uses uh, one core. So that means it can run quite well, even on low-end hardware. However, one thing I found that makes Grasshopper run a little bit better when you're just trying to uh, push it to the limits is actually to turn down the quality of its preview. So if you go up to this uh, icon here in the top right of the screen, you can see that it's preview mesh quality. Now this is the quality of the um, geometry that's being generated from Grasshopper. Um, sorry, not the quality of the geometry, the quality of the preview of the geometry. So th this doesn't actually affect um, the processing that Grasshopper is doing. This really just affects the quality of the display you get out. Um, and we can turn this down a lot um, to make Grasshopper run a lot smoother and a lot faster. So under custom quality, 
I just uh, untick this to a fine base grid uh, mesh box here. And then um, if you go hover over preview mesh quality, you can see that it's now set to custom quality. And that'll make Grasshopper run a lot faster if you're running into any uh, performance issues. Okay, I've gone ahead and just opened up the uh, Grace Farm Pavilion script from last week. Um, now I'm actually going to run through the process of creating this. Hopefully you can uh, work that out from the PDF and what you've been following along in class. But we are just going to make a few little tweaks to the uh, visual display of this. So there's a really useful component in Grasshopper um, called Custom Preview. Now Custom Preview gets away from this um, semi-see-through red display that, that is the default of Grasshopper and allows you to add uh, different colors with different levels of transparency. To get custom preview you can just double click on the canvas and type custom preview. Now I'm just going to um, show its location. I'm going to hold Control and Alt and then I'm going to click on the component and then Grasshopper has this handy little shortcut where it actually shows you where the component comes from. So this component comes from the Display tab under Preview. I'm just going to show you what this does. So I'm going to drag this over to the far right of my screen next to my floor. I'm going to plug my floor into the G of Geometry and the S. Now this can take a uh, Rhino material or just a color. So at the moment we're just going to use a color, so I'm going to bring down a color swatch. So if you still have the display tab open, you can open up the color and uh, you can bring down uh, any of these. However, I'm just going to double click and write color swatch. Color swatch, here it is. Which can be found on the input panel in Grasshopper. So under params, input, color swatch. I'm just going to plug this into the S. So we can see what this has done. It's just made that um, surface that was previously transparent red. Uh, it's just given that a solid white look. And now we can adjust that by double clicking on the color swatch um, and adjusting the color like this. So if we want more of a gray, we might move all these down to 100. Yeah, I think that looks pretty good. And now that we've done that, we can turn off the preview of the extrude component that we had before, just so uh, the same geometry doesn't need to be shown twice. So I'm going to go through, I'm going to do that for different parts of the model, just to get the model looking a bit better. So I can just copy this now that I've made it, just Control C and Control V. I'm going to do the same with the landscape. Instead of grey, I'm just going to have a little bit more of a white look, maybe. I'm going to do the same with the windows, but I'm going to add a bit of transparency this time. Um, the transparency is this bottom slider down here, the A. Something like that looks good. And again, I'm going to turn off the preview of the geometry, which will come up in the light red, which is the standard grasshopper color. Just copying this down. Make this maybe a little bit darker. Maybe not completely black. Actually, the roof is quite white in the Grace Farm Pavilion, so I should probably make it quite bright. Of course, there are different uh, ways of working here. There's the CMYK and the RGB setting here. I'm just going to copy this over.
Now that's looking a little bit better. I'm going to uh, go ahead and turn off the curves. Now we can um, we can just decide whether the curves are um, shown or hidden. Um, and the same display options um, menu we were on before, we get access to a whole lot of settings there. I really just encourage you to go in in your own time and explore what these do. So I'm just going to turn off show curves. And I can see just a little bit of red on the corner here. So that must mean I've left something on in the script. I'm just going to go back and turn off these previews here. Okay, now we have a really high standard of presentation here. Already is fairly good for, for a quick preview from our script. I'm going to uh, go ahead and maximize Rhino and minimize Grasshopper. I just want to show you the easiest way to take uh, quick visuals out of Grasshopper. Now the easiest way to do this is a command called view capture file. So I'm just going to go to the command line and type view capture file. A view capture to file, sorry. I'm going to hit enter. And it's just going to ask me where I want to save this. So I'm just going to create a new folder called week to script captures. I'm just going to call this one. Now if we navigate to that file, that's our final screenshot saved out. But now if we zoom in we can see that yeah the resolution isn't great on that, but we can really easily um, up the resolution. There's a little trick in Rhino where if you type a minus before your command you can sometimes get some advanced options. So I'm going to type minus view captured file. This is a bit more of a trick now, but I find it something I use all the time. Um, and then you'll get all the options just in the command line rather than in a separate window. So I want to say where it says save file name, I'm just going to click browse. I'm just going to call this one number two. And you can set the resolution here. And scale is actually just a multiplier to the resolution. So if you don't want to change the aspect ratio of your viewport, you can just turn up the scale. So I'm so you can say scale 4 and that will mean when it saves it will be uh, 44,000 pixels by whatever 4 times 400 is, was that uh, 2,000 pixels and you can have different options like setting a transparent background if you're saving as PNG etc. To save as PNG you just save the PNG file name rather than JPEG. So I'm just going to go ahead and click enter And now I can see here that that's in much higher resolution. If you zoom in, everything still stays sharp. Now similarly, if I want to capture the work I'm doing on Grasshopper, Grasshopper has a built-in tool for capturing uh, high resolution screen captures of scripts. You can find that under File, Export High Res Image, and then there's this uh, dialog here which is fairly easy to follow along. You just set the file path um, by clicking these ellipses and uh, this button here. I'm just going to save this in the same spot. Yeah, and this is just asking what colour you want the background to be. This is the default settings are fine, I'm just going to click OK. You'll see this running in the background. And then when it's done, we see we've got the PNG here of the whole script. Okay. Next we're going to run through a basic image sampler script, which is um, something like what we see here. Um, image sampler is a really, really useful technique in Grasshopper. Uh, it takes in reference imagery, like a JPEG or a PNG, um, and it converts it into a string of numbers that Grasshopper can recognize and can be linked to geometry. So you can have things scale 
or rotate or have a series of different operations based on uh, brightness values in the image or RGB values. Um, it's just a really useful way of achieving uh, variation in a design. Say you have the uh, face of a building next to the ocean and you want to um, include an image of rippling water or something taken from the ocean. Uh, it's a really easy way to do something like that. Um, so I've just got a couple of examples here. Um, this is a well-known one by ARM that you've probably seen. This would use uh, something like an image sampler. Um, and then here's a local example from IFLAB. So I'm just going to go ahead um, and open up a new document in Rhino and Grasshopper. Um, we're going to attempt to make a twisted brick facade. So to start off, I'm just going to draw um, a flat plane in this uh, front viewport here. I'm just using the um, rectangular plane corner to corner tool. And I'm going to reference that in Grasshopper. Going right click, set one surface, then selecting it. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is similar to what we've been doing before, I'm going to uh, panelize it in Lunchbox. So I'm just going to go to the Lunchbox tab and bring down quad panels. Sorry, I'm just going to do something over here to turn on the preview of preview names of components. So I've got quad panels. I'm going to plug in my surface into the quad panels. I'm going to uh, make some sliders, the U and the V. I'm going to use values of about, I think about 30 should be good. We'll see what this looks like. Not too bad. Could probably do with being a little bit wider if we were replicating brickwork. I'm just going to turn down my U divisions a little bit. Yeah, I think that looks good. I'm just going to uh, maximize the perspective view. Okay, so the image sampler itself is under input image sampler. And to bring in an image, we just go right click and down to the uh, where it says image dot 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 here. If we click on that, it'll just ask us to find the location of the image. Now I recommend using an image uh, with high contrast like a logo or something when you're setting up the image sampler because that makes it um, easiest to see whether you're on the right track or whether there might be some mistake you've made or something that's not quite working. So I'm just going to select this logo that I've downloaded from Wikipedia to start off with. Now um, we're going to need a, a, a field of um, rectangular grids. So I'm going to bring down the rectangular grid component. That's this one here. You can find it under the vector tab and under grid. Now this next section has a, a little bit of maths. Um, but if you follow this, you uh, probably don't need to think too much about how it works. Um, basically, this image sampler is set up by default to work on a domain from 0 to 1, and it's expecting to receive a whole lot of little points within the 0 to 1 range. Uh, so our, our surface here that we've created is much larger than 0 to 1, but this is a way of um, giving the image sampler the information it expects, and then using those numbers and matching them up with um, the surface that we want to use. So, and we do that based on using the U, the same U and V values for both components. So I'm just going to bring down a divide. So under the Maths tab, under Operations, I'm going to bring down uh, Divisions. Uh, division here. There we go, Mathematical Division. I'm just going to um, uh, bring down a number slider of 1. Just going to plug that into the A. I'm going to plug the U divisions into the B. So the way this rectangular grid works is it's looking for the size of the cells in the X and Y direction and then the number of cells in the X and Y direction. 
So I'm going to plug my um, U division into the S of X, and then I'm going to plug my U number into the E of X. I'm going to do the same thing with the V, just copying that down and bring down my uh, 31 number slider into the B, then plugging that into the um, S of Y, just going to move that across, and then I'm going to bring my V divisions into the E of Y so that these things are synced up. So now um, I'm just going to show you we've got this tiny little field of points here which is going to be used to provide information into the image sampler but otherwise we're actually not going to have to worry about that too much. So we have all these tiny little cells I just want to take the center point of them. Now one thing we can use to find the center point of a shape is a polygon center. Uh, we can also use area, but I find that component is significantly slower than polygon center. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna bring them both down and show you what I'm talking about. So our area component, if we plug it in, has a um, little tab for centroid, but I actually prefer to use, I'm just gonna double click and type polygon, polygon, center. This one here I find to be a bit more of an efficient component. You might find it when working on small scripts, but when you sort of try and work on things with maybe instead of 30 points, like 100 or something, uh, it's much more efficient to use polygon center. So I'm just going to use that and delete that for now. Now we can see that that's brought this through as a, as a tree rather than a, um, a list. So in, in Grasshopper there are different wire displays. Anything with a solid line it's just dealing with one list of geometry. If we hover over it, we can see that, that that's the case, one locally defined value. But anything with this dashed line that you may have noticed is actually a tree instead of a list. Now, I don't want to go too much into the distinction between a tree and a list at this stage. I think it's something that you'll only use much later in Grasshopper. Um, and, but, and really, to get you going, you should just be able to use lists for everything. So if we see a tree, we can just go right-click, flatten, and then hopefully if we do that uh, the whole way across our script, then we'll just have um, continuous lists that will sync up and work the way we expect them to. So I'm just going to um, hover over uh, center of polyline vertices, and we see a whole list of uh, numbers and points here. These just uh, correspond to parts of the image that we're going to sample. So, we, so this is looking for a field list of points, so we're just going to plug this into the image sampler. I'm going to bring down a panel here and just show you um, what's been generated. So we've got a whole field of numbers here. Now there are three numbers um, ranging up to 255. Now these correspond to the color values in the image, where white is 255, 255, 255. And then it seems that as this image just has white and red, the red must be 255, 30, 44. Um, now there's a whole lot of things you could do with the color values, although at the moment we actually just want um, a single brightness value for the image that's going to be a little bit easier to work with. So if we double click on the image sampler, we get this settings menu here. And here under channel, it's asking us what we want to measure for. So we can measure for the amount of red, green, and blue in the image, or it's alpha. We actually want to just come down here to the very far right and click on color brightness. If we select this, click OK, we should see that image turns into black and white. And we can see that here our values have just gone they're either 1 or 0 0.5. Now this list of points theoretically corresponds to uh, this list of panels here. Now I'm just going to um, bring down one operation which is scale which we can use just to check that that's all working properly. Now I believe scale is under transformation. Under transformation and then at the top left here is scale. I'm going to bring this down. Now we're going to scale um, each of these panels according to each of these values. So we're looking for scale is looking for some geometry a center point and a factor. Now a factor is, is going to be um, 
generated from the image sampler here. Our geometry are the panels. We can get a center point in the same way that we achieved the center point before using polygon center. I'm going to plug that into panels. I'm going to plug the uh, top output into the center point. And as the factor, it's going to come out of the image sampler here. And I'm just going to um, turn off all these, um, these unnecessary components so we can see what we're working with. There we go. Now we've got the, it's a little bit hard to see, but we've got this logo recreated in this geometry here. Now, there's, uh, once we have, once we're at this stage, really, there are so many different things we can do um, with this list of numbers. We can have these things rotate, we can have these things change color, we can have these things um, scale, or there'd be a whole lot of different sort of creative um, operations we can create on this uh, field of um, rectangles. The thing we're going to do at the moment is um, a twisted brick facade. Now you can see actually specialized software is built to sort of turn in uh, image patterns into instructions that uh, sort of a bricklaying machine or a bricklayer could follow. But we can actually replicate this quite easy with Grasshopper. So obviously bricks aren't uh, two-dimensional, they have a bit of thickness. So I'm going to um, extrude these panels. Just going to double click and type extrude. Extrude curves and surfaces along a vector. I'm going to plug in the panels into the B. And as for the direction, depending on how you've built your surface, it'll either be X or Y. I have a feeling that we're going to be looking for an extrusion in the unit Y direction. I'm going to plug that in there. It'll take a little bit to work. Um, and actually, that's not too bad. I might make it maybe 1.5. Of course, within Grasshopper, you have the option of working in, um, in in proper units, and I'd encourage you all to do that once you have a better um, grasp of how Grasshopper works. But um, I'm just mocking this up. I'm just going to look, use what looks roughly right. I'm just going to move that across here. I'm going to move everything down a little bit. I'm just going to shift these up so we can see what's going on. Now I'm going to get rid of this scale for a second, I'm just going to delete it. Um, I'm instead going to use Rotate. So under the Euclidean tab, we have this Rotate object in the plane. This is the one we want. There's a lot of different uh, Rotate components in Grasshopper. They're just basically looking for different um, inputs on how you set the um, angle of rotation and the axis of rotation. So. With our bricks from our extrusion um, operation here, we're just going to plug that into the uh, geometry tab of the rotate. Our plane is going to come from the polygon center. And uh, as it's measured in um, radians, we're just going to use our image sampler result into the A. I'm going to turn off uh, the preview of the unnecessary geometry and we can straight away see that um, we have a pretty good result here. We can see that logo coming out. Um, now the only thing I would change about this is we can see all this, this white uh, section of the logo here actually still comes up twisted. I kind of think that would look better if that were flat. So I'm going to, just going to uh, play around with the numbers here just using addition and subtraction uh, to get the desired result. So under the Maths tab, I'm just going to bring down a Subtract. So the same way that you do it in a calculator or something, I'm just going to subtract 1, plug that into the angle. And now I'm going to use a Custom Preview. by double-clicking and typing Custom Preview. I'm going to hide my other components. I'm going to bring down a color swatch. So instead of pink, we can have something like white or gray. And 
I'm even going to hide or just turn off um, the original plane for now. Great, and we can see that logo quite clearly. So that's working quite nicely. Quite happy with that result. Now instead of this image, we can use literally anything. So this logo is quite arbitrary really, but um, if we were instead wanted to use an image of water, I'm just going to set a different image here. Um, here's one that I've picked earlier. We just wait till that updates. And now we have all these bricks that have been twisted based on brightness values of this image. Great, thanks for following along.